Hi everyone, Joy here. I am interviewing Jim today. So Jim is uh, the host of the Entrepreneurial Truth Podcast and I was actually on his show, was that in December, Jim? I think it was. Yeah, I think it was in December or something. Yeah, in December. And uh, I have invited Jim to come onto my show because he is just full of inspiration and he's just a lovely guy to have a chat with. Hi there. My name is Joy Nicholson. I'm an entrepreneur, digital marketer, coach, and mentor. I've been diving in deep for the last year to discover what it really takes to be an entrepreneur. Not just the fluff that you see on the outside when you see people that are already successful, but what it takes behind the scenes to become successful. What I discovered was mind-blowing. Millionaires think differently. They have unique habits, focus, discipline, and so much more. Follow along in this podcast where I'll be sharing my journey, the journey of other entrepreneurs, what makes them successful, but most importantly, what can make you successful. So hi, Jim. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. It's, it's an excellent day over here in freezing cold Michigan. No, it's not too bad. <laughs> well, I'm from Michigan in the United States, so just so everybody knows. That's awesome. Uh, have you always lived in the United States? Yes. Okay. Yes. Always in Michigan? Uh, no, I was, uh, I lived in Minnesota for a year, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And I also was born in Bremerton, Washington, which is a na the naval base there. Cause my dad was in the Marine Corps. Oh, nice. So you know about traveling around a little bit? No, not really. I mean, I know a little bit about it just from going to Minneapolis and seeing some, I went to Florida, all those other, a lot of the States, but, um, I left, uh, Washington when I was very young. I okay. Two. So I don't remember that state at all. Okay. Not at all. I don't remember that journey. <laughs> <laughs> so tell the audience, who is Jim? What does Jim like to do behind the scenes? If Jim is not doing his amazing podcast, what is Jim doing? Jim is watching the Detroit Lions and suffering through the Detroit sports team which they're all, all the teams we have here are awful i mean just <laughs> awful i used to do a lions podcast called lions in the prowl mm -hmm. and it just turned to be a complaining session every single week about how awful this team really is and how they will never win anything ever oh wow and so i got i got tired of doing that you know it's it's bad to be upset every week at something it just is it's just uh, uh yeah i had to get out of it um, so yeah, I like that. I enjoy playing basketball. Um, and right now I'm empty nester. My kids are grown and out of the house and, uh, I live just with my wife and my one cat and that's it. <laughs> that's, that's the way to do it. My children are still small, so I don't have nobody in the house. I have to do the little three and six year olds. So I have a question for you. If you mm -hmm. have, if, say somebody is sitting in front of you. Mm -hmm. You guys are having a discussion about really going down in the entrepreneurial journey when it comes to leadership qualities in an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. What do you find is the three top leadership qualities that a person should have? Confidence is the first thing, I think. Yeah. Um, if you're going to lead other people, you have to be able to, to um, be comfortable in your own shoes, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that confidence is a, is a huge, huge thing. Yeah. I think that uh, knowledge, of course, is another one. You actually mm -hmm. need to know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But the third thing I think is one of the biggest things is how to deal with fear. Ooh, that's a good one. Yes. Because I think that that's the one thing that holds most of us back, like imposter syndrome or mm -hmm. the feeling of I'm not good enough or procrastination mm -hmm. is actually fear because it's a fear of something that you're, uh, are supposed to be doing, right? It's yeah. going to lead to a result that we, way deep down in your subconscious mind, you're not ready for. Exactly, exactly. So you're afraid of it. So fear is a huge, huge obstacle mm -hmm. in leadership in entrepreneurialism. So now you obviously have experienced fear. All entrepreneurs have. I've just, I have experienced fear just a week ago when I was relaunching this podcast. I was like in fear state of mind so how do you deal with fear jim what is your secret source when it comes to dealing with fear this is gonna this may be a little longer but um i i'm gonna go into it real quick i don't i'm gonna can take all day with it but um when i was 36 years old i suffered uh, both my kidneys died basically oh wow so long story short i had a 
five blood transfusions. And when I went to the hospital, they didn't even know how I walked in. I went there from work. And then three and a half years on dialysis. So what I say to myself is, I've been through worse. <laughs> that, is, that is a very good mindset to have, yes. So here, here's the thing. If I could tell, tell your audience one thing, okay? Go back to the last, like, what you thought was going to be the worst tragedy, the worst thing that possibly could happen to you. Yes. And then see where you are now. That's and see how you got through that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly true. And it's interesting that we're having this conversation because just yesterday I did an episode on being grateful, you know, having gratitude and being grateful for at least three things on a daily basis. And um, I find personally that helps me with fear things because you're thinking of what you have and what you can't have if you are scared. And, uh, and that helps me mentally. I know it's a bit weird, but that mentally, that mental shift in my mind helps a lot. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is we focus more on the problem and the lack of what we have than being grateful for what we do have. So you have an excellent point there. That's exactly true. I do this thing with my children every single night that we do thank you prayers. I ask them both, what were you grateful for today? What was the thing that you appreciated about today? And then we say thank you for what we have. Because it's so important to do that. You know, it's so important to be grateful and then, you know, it's amazing. The magic happens behind that. It's absolutely amazing. It does. So now, what has been your greatest accomplishment in the last year? It doesn't have need to be big or small, whatever it is. What, what do you feel as a person has been your greatest accomplishment? It can be personal, it can be business, it can be anything. Well, maybe a few things, but one is consistency. I have been extremely consistent with my videos and getting things out to people and just learning all kinds of things about people. But I, I left my job recently. And so I think that was one of the, the goals coming out is I wanted to get out of the job and do this full time. And I'm doing that now. Yes. Nice. That's a huge that accomplishment. So awesome. Well done. <laughs> Cause I think the last time we talked, you were still in your job, right? Yeah. Yeah. Last time we were, we did the show. I mean, yes. we talk every once in a while online and stuff, yes, but yes, it was yes. just uh, <laughs> a quick thing here and there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome though. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Cause that's a big thing. Once you've Thank reached you. that step of actually saying goodbye boss, um, that's when the yeah. magic happens as well. And that's what I also had to do. I had to quit my job so I can focus fully on my business and it makes yep. a big difference. It's amazing how much effort and more things you can put into your business when you do that. It is, but you have to be careful of, um, being your own boss sometimes, you, you know how you try to get away with things at work? <laughs> I don't know. My boss is pretty lenient right now, so <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so being your own boss, Jim, what do you reckon is the three things that stands out for you on a daily basis? Like three things that you consistently do on a daily basis? Um, every day. I'm very, I got to be very disciplined in what I do with my time. Mm -hmm. So time management every single day. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, I've got these videos to get out. I've got this to do. I've got these calls to make. I've got these people to talk to. So you have to, you have to schedule yourself out and stick to that. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The second thing is you have to have a, a, like a, they call it a DMO. So daily method of operation. So you have to have, um, and this kind of goes back to the other thing, but it's so important to mm -hmm. list the tasks that you want to do every day mm -hmm. and do that. So I spend some time on um, my marketing and stuff like that. I spend some time on my, you know, getting the shows ready, doing the thumbnails and, and all the work that, well, you know, <laughs> and then I spent, and then I spend some time on self-development. So I'll listen to an audio book while I'm doing something else to get some more information. Nice. You know. That's awesome. I like that. Because being an entrepreneur, if you're not disciplined, you're screwed. There's no polite. Absolutely. You're absolutely screwed. And it's so easy to get distracted. So um after oh, and I, 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 mm -hmm. I didn't do a third one. Yes. What's your third one? Third one the third one is take breaks. Ah. Because What's hard, for, what's hard for me is I'll start at four in the morning. This is no lie. I, I'll start at four in the morning and then by nine, 10 o'clock, I don't realize I put six hours in already. 
because I like what I'm doing. Yes, at the job, time goes so slow because you don't really care for what you're doing. But when you're working for yourself, you're all gung ho and ready to go. And yeah, you know, <laughs> and I kind of lose track of how much time I'm actually spending. So you almost have to mm -hmm. schedule those breaks and maybe you can set an alarm or something. So you're not working yourself to death. <laughs> I recommend a watch. I don't. I didn't put it on now, but um, I have a smart watch that buzzes every hour, mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. it reminds me to get up and stretch. Because if you don't do that, but alarm is a good idea if you don't have a smart watch, just to get you to. And there's so many apps that you can install that can also help with that. Yeah. So if you take a break, how many? How, when? How long do you work for before you take a break? You know, it varies, but I, I'm probably at about four or five hours now, and I would say more five. So I get up at four and I'll take a break about nine. But my first hour is, is just kind of getting into the day and maybe I'll do a meditation or I'll, I'll watch a YouTube video, something like that, just to get my mind right first. Mm -hmm. And then I'll start getting into the day and I'll play a game for a little bit, get my mind going, you know, problem solving and stuff like that. And then mm -hmm. I'll get into my day. So technically, I probably only worked out of that six, probably I worked five, maybe, yeah, about five hours during that time. So I'll take that first hour and just kind of mm. ease into stuff. Yeah. Because you want your mind sharp. You want it fresh for new ideas and things that are going to, you know, good things for you for, uh, to happen to you during the day. And there's been studies to prove that the more breaks you take, the more productive you are. Well, I'm not doing that, so <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just being completely honest, you know. <laughs> okay, so I recently relaunched my podcast to talk more about focus because yes. talking to a lot of people, that's a big problem for a lot of entrepreneurs. How do you find yourself, if I have to say on the scale of one to 10, one being terrible, 10 being really amazing, how's your focus levels on a daily basis? I got to say 10. I'm after it. I, I really am. I'm, I'm not, not slacking when you, I started the podcast in September, the mm -hmm. 25th of September, because that was my 50th birthday. Yeah. Cool. And um, <laughs> with, I'll have a show tonight. And with that one, that'll be 72 episodes. That is amazing. Well done. How many yeah. is that a day? I usually release one a day pretty close. I mean, there's been days I haven't been able to just because, you know, the yeah. guest didn't show up that day or something like yeah. that. But now I've been running into February. It's been two a day almost constantly. I have uh, up till Friday, I think, uh, in the in the storage queue, so they say. <laughs> That's impressive. So, what, okay, so being a podcast host um, myself, it's hard to it's hard to create content all the time. So do you have a method of scheduling your content or, you know, like if you do two episodes a day for like a month, you actually technically have enough content to last your six, you know, like if you carry on, you say, so if you do one release a day, then you mm -hmm. can have like a bit of a break in between. Do you, is that something that you would do? Um, not really. And, and I'll explain that because if I'm doing two shows a day, those two shows has to be edited like the next day or I'll get so far behind, I won't catch up. Mm -hmm. So during those days, I mean, the, the amount of time it takes to upload everything, which I'm trying to streamline just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I have a guest funnel that I uh, created in um, Google, uh, Google Sheets so that everything, all the groups that I, uh, all the guests that I'm trying to get on the show, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm contacting them and following up and I've got that in the kind of CRM type of a thing. Nice. And then I've got every place that I could put the podcast on in like Facebook groups and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And that's all in um, another funnel, another Google doc. I don't know. It's, it's the sheets and all you got to do is mm -hmm. click on it and it, it pops right up. Nice. So instead of searching for all those groups, I've streamlined that whole yes. process. Yes. So there's just a, I do that. I'll, I'll do some things in Canva. Sometimes if I'll do three or four of them in the morning when I don't have a lot to do, it'd be like a good morning for everybody. And then a couple other cards of different things or, you know, inspirational quotes or something like that. I'll do yeah. that. So there's just a lot to do. And scheduling it it's got to be during during the parts where i'm not editing or doing any of that stuff because it takes a little bit to do all that mentally yeah. 
but yeah, there's just a, it's, it's kind of a schedule in the mornings I more market and, and do those type of things and mm -hmm. create. And then towards the afternoon, I'll be more editing and doing my thumbnails and putting things up. And then evening, that's where I do my uh, interviews. Yes. Well, like you say, you have to be disciplined and you obviously need to have a system to do all these things. And well done. You sound like you're pretty disciplined and organized all at the same time to produce so much content and, you know, getting it streamlined so well. Yeah, I could, I could do better, but at this point, and it will be better. It's just, I got to get a little more organized and tighten things up just a little bit more so I don't spend so much time. Mm. You know, the processing power as I use Camtasia. So the processing power in that for the computer takes a bit. So I have another computer and I'm going to be putting that in the office too, so that I can use one while the other one's, you know, uploading or downloading something. That's exactly, exactly what I'm doing. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm sitting with two laptops yep. <laughs> and the screen. Yep. It makes it so much easier. <laughs> okay. What has been your biggest failure? What is that thing that you feel just, was a failure. Oh man, I've had so many. No, I'm, just <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. Yes. I think the yeah. I think the audience growth has been such a serious problem for me. And I had a like I said, I had a Lions podcast that had 127 something thousand downloads, mm -hmm. and. I was pretty used to getting good numbers. I had a guy from ESPN on that show and the local beat writers from the Detroit free press and all over. And in this, it's so much different because I'm not sure why YouTube, it's harder to get traction, but it just seems to be for me. So that's a failure on my part because yeah. I just don't, because I, I should study more. That's a, that's the thing. I need to take time to learn more. Mm. Well, if you do your morning ones, check out Marley Jacks. I told you she's really good. So after, after I'm going to. <laughs> fix from her. She's really, really good. Okay. So execution, we've kind of talked a little bit about it now. Um, but now from the moment, uh, this is a bit of a trick question. So from the moment you record your episode all the way through to editing and doing your thumbnail and all of that stuff, how long on average does it take you to do one episode all the way from hour, recording to hour and 20 minutes? That's not bad. That's not too bad. No. Yeah. No, that's not bad because I'm doing two things at once usually. Exactly. So your execution time is actually pretty amazing. That's really, mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. And no, has it always bad. been like that or have you, you know? Um, that's, that's, that's a goal. So it's like, yes, it's going to be that way. Nice. <laughs> I can't have it any other way. <laughs> so, okay. Being entrepreneurs, one thing that we do very I don't know, actually one entrepreneur that does not do this without knowing it, you neglect your family and friends. I was yes. guilty of that myself. I have slapped myself on the wrist this year and I have not been doing that, um, especially in the last actually seven, eight weeks. But how are you, how is your, your view on that? You know, do you neglect your family and friends because you just pour all of yourself into your podcast and your work and things, or do you make time for family and friends? Um, Let's put it this way. I try to take Sundays off. So I try to do uh, all my work Saturday to get that all done so I can spend time on Sundays, both recharge and relaxing. I have one person I'm coaching and podcasting right now. So, uh, so I do that for an hour on Sunday, but that's it. Okay. There's nothing else that I do on Sundays. That's and awesome. so I take that day for myself both to recharge and that stuff. And then to, you know, to either hang out with friends or, or whatever. Uh, my wife is a freelance writer. So she's doing, that's her busiest day, unfortunately. So we have to <laughs> coordinate that a little better, but you know, at the end of the day, we both hang out and stuff like that. And I think that's pretty good. We don't cause she has her writing to do and she started a, spirit wolf creative is what i think it's called her um agency for she's getting contracts from like blog po blog sites and stuff and then nice. people will write underneath her and then yeah. whatever i don't i don't understand the whole thing but <laughs> i mean i do a little bit but you know yeah. so basically she does her thing i do my thing and meet in the middle oh that's awesome that it's very important to have that family ties and relationships that's one thing that I've learned that I was very bad. And then when I've spoken to previous people on the podcast as well, um, you know, and this year I thought, you know, if I can just help people and myself, 
um, to just focus on family and friends too, because your business is not everything, you know? Absolutely. Mm, it's the people around us that makes us successful. But That's ironically, I found that I've made better friends through the podcast than I have almost at home. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And like-minded people, we can talk on, on entrepreneurship and different mm -hmm. aspects of building your business. And I love to talk about that. So it's mm -hmm. like, I've made new friends to where some of the old friends don't really get me anymore. And I don't know if that's happened to you, but that's just my oh, yes. case. Oh, yes, definitely. I have friends that um, we're still close. Like I've got my besties, you know, they will always be my besties. But um, like friends that I wasn't too close with, they're just not friends anymore at all, to be quite blunt. And it's not because I've pushed them away. It's just this, the relationship just naturally, you know, went a separate yep. way because you don't have any more interests. Uh, there's just nothing. Yeah, I completely agree. Okay, so... Um, Putting Jim back 20 years ago, like, I don't know, Jim, I'm going to assume you're 40. You know, let's just go with that. I'm, fi I'm 50. <laughs> no, we will say 40 just for the sake of it. No, I'm just joking. Okay, well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. The 21-year-old Jim. What would a 21-year-old Jim say to you now today? What would I say to him or he say to me? Sorry, what would he say to you? What would you say to the 21-year-old Jim? Can you that again? <laughs> oh, I would tell him to go back to school. Oh, <laughs> that's a new one. Okay. Why would you no, say No, seriously, because um, a lot of people give education a bad rap. And, and to a certain extent, I do too. But I've always wanted to do this. But I think that if I went to, 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 to college or took some courses and more in business and different things like that, that I'd be better equipped today. Okay. That's a very interesting view. Would you then would you then do like an online course or because I know back in like twenty one years ago, however long, there wasn't online things. Yeah, it might you know, there was just uh as far as I know, there were just uh business courses at that time. Yeah. yeah. But that, no, not really, because yeah, twenty years ago there probably there probably wasn't what there was now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But that's what I would say. And the reason I would say that and it, I wasn't I wasn't a big party person or anything like that. So it's like, I wouldn't change who I was too much, but I think I tried to have a little too much fun, a little too much defiance and a little too much kicking back at the system at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Being a bit rebellion. <laughs> so like screw school. I don't want to do this, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would, I would tell them, yeah, that person. Yeah. I'd, I'd go and go as deep into school as you could. And not because, not because of a degree, because it's a piece of paper, yeah. but it's just for the educational purposes. It's yeah. just to, to, to get that things. base of learning and how to, how to study a little bit better and how to do things mm -hmm. like that. I think that's invaluable for people. We're always learning, always. I think the biggest thing for me with education and people giving it such a bad rap these days is that I personally think that it teaches you discipline and structure. And even if you walk out of there and you don't really learn anything, say you take maths and you walk out of there and you're not going to be an accountant, you basically wasted a lot of money, but you walk out of there with other skill sets, you know, like mm -hmm. being disciplined and structured because every day you had to do that. And I find personally that that is almost more valuable than the skill that you've learned, depending obviously on what you study and yeah. Mm -hmm. And building okay. friendships and relationships. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> I, I I feel that there is no waste because everything is something that we need to learn to become the person we are. I oh, completely agree. Yes. It's all part of the journey, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got one more question to go. So what would you say um, if you have to ask anybody, okay, so say for example, you're standing in front of a millionaire, right? And you mm -hmm. can this person any question what would that one question be that you'll ask this person this is going to sound a little nuts <laughs> but i'm going to ask him what he did on the inside to get where he is today ah i like that that's a really good because question because i really believe that whatever is on the inside mm -hmm. reflects the outside of what your business is they're a mirror for each other and so how did he get over all the struggles and the internal junk 
to be able to be successful because it's not all smarts. I mean, people made pet rocks for goodness sakes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It can't be that. <laughs> yeah. It, it so, you're right. That's a very good question. I like that. Yeah. Mm. So that's, that's what I think. <laughs> mm. Mm. I'm, I'm going to remember that one in future, all the junk. Okay. So, any advice for other entrepreneurs? Anything that you would say to people that um, are struggling in their journey, people that are not quite there yet, but they've started the process, what would you advise them? Shut out the noise. Mm -hmm. In your mind, in your heart, in your emotions, it is telling you that you can't be who you want to be. Turn off that noise. The thing, the thing is, is that, as I just said, mm -hmm. You are a mirror for your business and whatever struggles internally are going to be the struggles that you have in your business. Exactly. So number one, you were put on this planet to do something. And when you step into what you're doing, mm -hmm. you may feel like a fake or an imposter or something that, you know, uh, who's going to listen to me, that type of thing. You really have to rein that in and stop thinking about what you don't have. Mm -hmm. Be thankful for what you do have. Stop living in fear and start living in joy. And I did do a little thing on your name, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that though. Yeah, I like that. That's really great advice. So yeah, I completely agree with you. That's really, really awesome advice. Jim, I thank you. It has been fun having this interview with you. You are my first interviewee for 2020. So you can put that on your sheet. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that. I'm grateful to be here though. I really am. I appreciate I'm it for you as well. I had lots of fun on your podcast. So guys, if you want Jim to interview you, um, he can, we can put your link on the bottom of this podcast as well. And then you Thank guys you. Can reach out to Jim. He's got a really, really, really cool episode. Uh, well, podcast with lots of awesome episodes and you've been interviewing a lot of really awesome people. So it's, um, yeah, I, I did you remember. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jim. I really appreciate your time and uh, have a great day and have a great week. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>